How many of you guys have experienced heartburn or ulcers? It is pretty common, especially if you eat spicy food and, and um, or a lot of spicy food, and all of a sudden you feel that heartburn or that burning sensation that's just going up your body, right up your um, esophagus, and uh, maybe sometimes <clears throat> even a little bit in your mouth, right? So that heartburn feeling that you're feeling over here is actually GERD, which we're going to look at today. So we're going to look at drugs that we can use when someone has gastrointestinal disorders. And the drugs that we are going to look at for the purpose of this class is histamine 2 blocking agents, proton pump inhibitors, and antacids. So let's talk more about gastrointestinal diseases. So we looked at ulcers, or you may have heard of ulcers before, and ulcers basically is a fancy way of saying a hole in your stomach. And when you have a hole in your stomach, all the acid content from your stomach comes out. And when it comes out, we're not happy. We could get, um, we could be vomiting. We could have that reflex feeling. It's not, it's not fun. And peptic ulcers happens from this bacteria, which is called H. pylori bacteria, and that's what causes ulcers that can make you feel upset. Then we have GERD, and GERD is heartburn. Okay, and what happens is when you feel that acid going up. Uh, your body. The reason why this is happening is because typically it doesn't happen and it doesn't happen because we have a sphincter that closes the stomach. But sometimes that sphincter opens and it allows all the acid to just go up your esophagus causing that heartburn, causing that reflux. So there are drugs to prevent this from happening. If you are adamant on not taking drugs, there are other ways to work around it. So uh, we would say before going to sleep, don't eat four hours before going to sleep. And if you are going to bed, make sure you prop up um, your head by pillows so, or raise the head of the bed if you can. And eat smaller meals because if you eat more often, um, it, it can trigger it. If you eat spicy foods, if you drink a lot of caffeine, there's lots of things that can cause GERD. And then there's these medications that we're going to look at that can help with acid reflux or with GERD. So ulcers, if you have a hole in your stomach, what causes it? Bacteria. Which bacteria is called the H. pylori bacteria? Sometimes if you take NSAIDs drugs like aspirin, if you take aspirin, which is acidic, you, there's a high chance of you getting GERD because aspirin is an acidic um, medication that can make this more acidic. And we don't like it when the stomach gets more acidic because there's a higher chance that you could have heartburn. So one of the drugs that we use for treating um, gastrointestinal diseases or for treating GERD or heartburn is called a histamine 2 blocking agent. So it blocks. What does it block? It blocks the amount of acid in your stomach. It blocks the acid from entering into your stomach. Okay, and the key way to remember this is if you look at the name of the medication, you'll notice that it all ends in dine, right? Do you see that it all ends in dine? So when you see D-I-N-E at the end of every medication or of a medication, think of dine as in eating, right? To eat, to dine. And when we eat something, we could get an acid reflux. So this medication that has the word dine at the end is a medication for gastrointestinal disease or GERD, for example. Okay, so it works by decreasing the amount of acids in your stomach. These are some examples. These are the brand names. This is the generic name. And it ends in dine. There are obviously side effects for these medications, as you see over here. This medication over here called cimetidine. So I know it's as dine, but it's actually pronounced as dine. Cimetidine is a medication that we have to be very careful with because there are drug interactions. So if I take an antifungal drugs that we looked at before, such as these drugs, and I combine it with this uh, drug over here, it may not work as well. Alcohol and this drug does not get along. It decreases the um, Actually, what happens with this is if you take this medication with alcohol, your blood alcohol level can uh, spark up really high, can get really high. And if you're taking any benzo drug, which is an antipsychotic drug, 
it can also um, reduce the effectiveness of this drug. So there are, this medication we have to be really careful with because it does affect other drugs or other or even alcohol. Another drug we can look at is proton pump inhibitors, and these are drugs that also help with the stomach. It helps neutralize the acid in your stomach. And the way it actually works is that we have proton pumps that are um, outlined or around our stomach, and these proton pumps allow acid to enter into our stomach. Well, what the proton pump inhibitor does, it, 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 it inhibits the proton pumps, and so it prevents acid from coming into our stomach. It reduces the acid. Okay, so when we treat um, GERD, when we treat heartburn, we treat at it from many different angles. We could use a histamine blocking agent and treat it that way. We could use a proton pump inhibitor and treat it that way. We could use Tums, which is an antacid, and treat it that way. So there's many different angles that you could treat it at or treat the GERD disease. So proton pump is another way. And when you look at the ending of the proton pump inhibitors, you'll notice that it ends in prazole, right? Prazole. So the way to remember this is prazole starts with P. P also starts with protein pump inhibitors, right? PPI. So P and P, they go together. So when you think of prazole, think of P, protein pump inhibitors. Antacids is another type of drug that just neutralizes, that just, you know, just tries to neutralize any acid in your stomach. It tries to decrease the acid in your stomach. And you, this is something that you guys are probably familiar with. Someone, you or someone in your family may have used Tums at some point in their life. It's a great way to relieve, relieve the heartburn. So that's a different type of medication that could be used. And then there are other types of medications, but we do not need to know this for the purpose of this class. Laxatives just know that the, these, if you ever take a laxative, it's used for constipation. So if you're constipating, then you're going to be prescribed a laxative, um, antidiarrheal. So emodium is a very common one. If you are, um, you know, always if you always find yourself in the washroom passing diarrhea, you want to take a medication like emodium to stop that. Anti antiemetics is if you're vomiting or if you're nauseous, then you're going to take a drug that falls under the antiemetics category. And lastly, to end off with, celiac disease is a very common disease that actually affects one in a hundred people. So it's very common. Um, it's hereditary, which means that if your parents have it or grandparents have it, there's a chance that you can get it. And what happens is if you have celiac disease, there are there is a protein that's called gluten that's found in some of our foods or some of our grains. And that what that protein does, what gluten does is it attacks the small intestine. And so as such, you may, um, you know, find yourself always uh, in the washroom, passing diarrhea. You may lose weight. You may have skin rashes. You may even have no symptoms. But the only treatment for celiac disease currently is using a gluten-free diet. So finding um, uh, grains that have gluten-free or food that have gluten-free. And that can probably affect the way or affect, uh, it can help you treat celiac disease or it can help you control the symptoms for celiac disease.